From the acid-spewing black dragon to the cute but deadly displacer beasts, here are some easter eggs you might have missed in Dungeons & Dragons Honor Among Thieves. Starting off with Revel's End. On your knees. Okay, chop it off. Chop it off, let's do it. Now, this prison serves as the starting location for Dungeons & Dragons Honor Among Thieves, and it's home to the worst criminals in Faerun, and is controlled jointly by the city-states that make up the Lord's Alliance. It's located on the far northern coast of the freezing Icewind Dale. Funny enough, Revel's End was built especially for Honor Among Thieves. But due to production delays, the jail wasn't formally added to the Dungeons & Dragons universe until the action-adventure Icewind Dale Rime of the Frost in 2020. Wizards of the Coast developed the adventure to support the world that the filmmakers were creating, and according to a featurette from Paramount, the book was published in 2020, while the film followed in 2023, making Revel's End a sort of infinity loop easter egg in both worlds. And even some of the most seasoned dungeon masters find it difficult to leave the Frozen Fortress during their sessions. Similarly, in the movie, Chris Pine might be playing the role of Edgen the Bard, but he's far from being an ordinary one. Edgen Darvis is a little bit different than the characters I've played uh, before in the sense that he is uh, undeniably an optimist. He will make the best out of any situation. Did that count as a question? Yes. Only answer when I talk to you, okay? Yes. Why did you say okay at the end of that? I didn't. Fantastic. Where's the shovel? You see, in the movie, the part where Edgen has a flashback, we find out that he belongs to the Harpers, a secret organization. This information strikes a small emotional chord throughout the movie, as it explores concepts of destiny and redemption. Longtime Dungeons & Dragons fans should recognize it as well. The Harper family has been a staple in the Forgotten Realms ever since the game's inception in the late 80s. Their members identify themselves with silver pins featuring a harp and a crescent moon. Considering that the group lacks any kind of formal authority and is utterly unorganized, the pins are the only constant among all of them. But these pins aren't just for show or identification purposes. They actually have a unique spell on them to guard against magic that could read a harper's mind or determine their alignment. We know that the film features a ton of ordinary and magical items, but there's a special one that never gets mentioned by name, and it's the Bag of Holding. In Honor Among Thieves, Simon the Sorcerer is currently being offered items that the keen observer will realize have no logical way of fitting anywhere on him. The only thing he does have on him is a small leather sack that's decorated with a grinning, stylized face. But one of the most helpful things in the history of the game will be instantly recognizable to those who have been playing the latest editions of D&D. But what exactly is it? Well, the Bag of Holding is a magical bag that can carry up to 500 pounds of weight in a pocket dimension that's contained entirely within the Bag of Holding itself. Even though the bag can hold a lot, it only ever weighs 15 pounds. The person who's carrying it only needs to extend a hand inside, and think of the item they want that's kept within to produce it. This amazing little accessory is how a sorcerer with such a slight frame was able to carry around the numerous items that came his way. But besides secret organizations and magical bags, it's time to start talking about the monsters in the movie, specifically the Rust Monsters. In one of the scenes where Hala and Edgen are being led to their deaths by guards, two rust monsters are seen battling over a metal lock that only the quickest of observers might have seen. The fact that the main characters are brought through a dungeon that's totally composed of stone and only a few metal trappings really stood out in this scene. The only metal that can be seen is in the form of rusted cell doors and iron bars. But why is everything metal there rusted? Well, in appearance, rust monsters resemble gigantic roaches, but their lengthy antenna are topped with bristling feathers, and their secret lies in these feathers. Rust monsters will eat anything metal that these feathers touch, which honestly ends up causing a particularly terrible fate for players, who find themselves dealing with other dungeon encounters with weak battle axes, and blessed armor that's suddenly more holy than holy. These monsters used to be much larger, the size of small horses, and some even speculate that they were the larval form of rust dragons. Now, this next monster might look like an adorable giant cat, but don't be fooled by its appearance, because the displacer beast is more deadly than you think. In one
one of the shots in the movie, we see Edgen and his fellow explorers dodging a vicious panther-like creature, and this creature is none other than the Displacer Beast, and it's another staple of the early D&D sessions. These beasts have six legs and a pair of plant-like pads on tentacles that protrude from their backs. Creepy. They're basically pack animals that can bend light around themselves magically, making them appear to be closer or further away from their prey than they actually are. In essence, it projects false images of itself to trick its prey. The Displacer Beast's ability provides for exciting encounters where adventurers must rely on more than just their fighting skills to survive. But no other creature in this franchise is better at tricking adventurers than the notorious Mimic. See, the bane of all greedy adventurers made an appearance in the movie, probably adding salt to old wounds some players had forgotten they ever had. I mean, ask literally any D&D enthusiast, and they're sure to have an amazing tale about the time their group faced a mimic. Tales of trickery, close calls, and humor will prevail, all because of this annoying little creature disguising itself as a delightful crest, chair, or almost whatever the dungeon master can think of. Mimics have a habit of disguising themselves as commonplace objects, and patiently wait for an oblivious adventurer to come across them, which was Holga in this case. Now, when the adventurer touches the mimic, they will stick to it and the creature will strike. Mimics are dangerous, swift, and incredibly frustrating to fight, particularly if the story continues to follow their sticky effects. Now, judging by the creatures mentioned so far, you know they're not your typical everyday monsters. And the same goes for the Black Dragon. Mainstream viewers may be accustomed to seeing a variety of dragons in fantasy titles, from the legendary Smaug to Daenerys's dragon. But the one that's seen in the movie is no ordinary dragon by any means. What is that? Even though Displacer Beasts and Gelatinous Cubes are tough and ferocious in their own right, they pale in comparison to the might of a black dragon. And the one in the movie appears to be an adult, or at least a young adult, making them highly powerful. But what is it that sets them apart from other dragons? Well, it's the fact that black dragons can spew black acid, literally obliterating anything in their path, and they're also capable of attacking with their claws and tail. The sight of a dark dragon flapping its wings into frame and showering the battlefield with black acid breath is enough to give even the most seasoned players nightmares. Honestly, watching that scene in the movie where the entire army just turns into one black gloop is really unsettling. Black dragons also have a reputation for being the last resort for pissed dungeon masters. Well, that was all on the easter eggs you might have missed in Dungeons & Dragons Honor Among Thieves.